Welcome members, this is Brandon Judd responding to a video analysis request today uploaded by user Tyler Boyd. And uh, this is on a tantrum, a toe side front side three, a, and a heel side front side three. Um, and uh, Tyler, thanks for the description down here. It says you've landed all these tricks at one point in time, but can't seem to get them figured out. Any pointers? Um, absolutely. I'm really excited to get this one uh, through today. I think we can really help you a lot on all of these. Um, just, just something to note to other members and for the, for the future as well. Uh, if you can upload these individually as individual requests, um, then it'll be easier for our members who are also having the same issues to search them. Um, for this one, I'll just do them all together, but uh, in the future, just break them up, submit these videos separately, and then we'll kind of go through them one by one. That way the video won't be so long as well. Um, all right, so the first thing is a toe side front side 360. Um, it looks like everything is pretty good. Um, but you go early and I'm probably going to say that on a lot of these things because that's the most common issue, uh, when people are getting tricks back or when they, right after they just learn it, they get really excited and, uh, have a hard time being patient through the trick and then the trick stops working. So this is a normal thing to have happen. It happens to me as well. Um, I'll, you know, have, I don't want to call it beginner's luck, but I'll, I'll, sometimes land a trick really quickly and then I'll lose it for a really long time before I get back. So um, this is not uncommon, but we can help you through this. So let's take a look at this 360. So the first thing that happens, I noticed it a little bit on your heel side 360s as well, but the first thing that happens on this toe side 360 is you start to spin a little right off the wake and you kind of throw your shoulders into it. And you can't really tell too much here because you're all bunched up, but your axis, instead of being straight up and down, your axis is kinked a little bit this way because you started to uh, spin once you were uh, on edge. So when you're on edge, let's go back to that for a second. Um, when you, let's see, I went too far. Here we go. When you're on edge, you're leaning a little bit this way. See how your upper body is tilted toward your takeoff wakes? Um, if you start spinning in this position, you will force your axis to stay rotating around this. And then when you go to land, um, you'll be on your heels. Your uh, axis stays kinked like that, and where in reality, you actually need to be leaning the opposite way. You need to be leaning toward uh, your landing to stay on your toe side. So that's all that's happening here is you're starting to spin right here, and you're still angled kind of kinked like that um, so and you can see here as well with the angle of the board a little better how you're still spinning kind of stuck at that axis um, and then you actually finish the spin right there and then you just kind of drop out of it so your arm it's hard to see in this video but the, your arm is kind of hanging out and you're just sort of stuck um, trying to stop yourself. So again, you land on that weird axis. So that that's the main issue is you're leaving early. Um, the second part is where your upper body is. Your, it looks like your eyes are kind of looking toward this shoreline now. Um, again, that's because you also finished the trick you know, up here instead of on the water. Um, but uh, that's going to be a common issue there. So I want, you, I want to take you through a couple examples of this just so you can see in direct comparison. Uh, so here's one of Clayton and we'll watch how long he waits until he starts spinning. So he'll pop up and set his axis. And at this point is where he kind of sets his axis. Um, because of the grab, it sort of throws it off. But if you just look at his spine, his spine is pretty up and down right now. Um, and then when he goes to finish the trick, he can stay pretty upright, land with two hands on the handle, keeping his eyes looking back toward um, the shore behind him. So instead of looking at the shore out here, he's looking kind of down the path of the wakes when he lands and then uh, keeps that handle back toward his lead hip and keeps his chest over his toes to keep from over rotating. So I'm going to show you another example of that just to see how consistent it is. Here's one of Ben Greenwood uh, doing the same thing, different grab. Um, he waits, pops up and sets his axis straight up and down, um, and then sets the tail down in the wake, lands, impacts with both hands on the handle, his eyes are looking back down the wakes, um, and then uh, he's able to ride it away. 
Uh, again, one more here. This is uh, Sasha, and he's not grabbing it. So I wanted to see you. I wanted you to see one that is not grabbed, so you could see how he sets his axis. And look how his board is horizontal. Uh, if you remember, yours was kind of kinked. Let's find that example really quick. So maybe a little bit earlier. Yeah. So right there, see how your board is at an angle. And then if we hop forward to Sasha's, you'll see that his is uh, leveled out perfectly, which allows him to land. And you'll see even here, he, he land, impacts cuffed and passes the handle. You'll see he's still a little on his heels. But look how hard he fights to keep his upper body looking backward, trailing behind his lower body, and keeping his chest over toes. Um, like he he's really fighting that there. He he won't even allow himself to look toward this shoreline or to look forward toward the boat. Um, he's really forcing that to stay there to save that landing. Um, so that's the toe side 360. Uh, all in all, we got to change this axis to start later so you can set the axis in the air. You have plenty of time. So when you began, if you just popped up and waited like in this position. Um, and waited until the last second to finish your last uh, switch backside 180 uh, and then kept your eyes looking back and tried to land in the cuffed position. That'll keep that really consistent. Um, you can also do switch heel side backside inside out 180s to remind yourself how it feels to land. And you can ollie a little bit early so that you're landing and impacting in the blind position on the downside of the wakes. A lot of people when they do inside out ones they will go really fast and then kind of boost outside the wake to where they're landing in the flats. Uh, and that changes the line tension and the angle on you a bit. So uh, slow the boat down a bit. You can do it off the startup roller or you can just slow it down to like 16, 17 miles an hour. Um, and then edge toward the your landing side wakes on this in a switch heel side position. And then ollie early to where you uh, just kind of stick the tail in the wake uh, or your switch nose in the wake so that you can land and ride away cuffed and kind of mimic that feeling without having to force yourself to feel rushed by going big and wake to wake at first. So I'd recommend doing those inside out drills first and then immediately come back in and do a toe side three but wait to finish your rotation until really late and I think that'll fix the rest of the issues. Um, that is it for that one. Um, so let's go and move on to your tantrum all right so the only thing on your tantrum that re you're really having problems with is you're not letting go of your backhand early enough and squaring up at the wake enough so it like it almost doesn't look like it's going to be a tantrum until really really late in the game so you're still two hands on the handle still two hands on the handle and you just took that your hand off the handle and started to arch your back um so i want you to look at the timing of when uh, Kyle, for example, you'll notice his hand is already off the handle and he's at the bottom of the wake. And then when he squares up, his hand is off the handle completely. Shoulders are pretty in line with the rope. And then uh, he just really sticks the tail of the board deep into the wake. And that allows him to get a nice clean end over end uh, rail over rail pop. Um, let's go back to yours and watch how yours functions because of that sort of stalls out and goes really far backside um, and then under rotates. So that's the biggest thing is we just got to get you setting up to pop and square upright. So your hand should be off the handle here and then your shoulders should be more in line with the rope here and I shouldn't see this board pointing across the way because you should already have lined that board up with the direction you're going. Let's look at Kyle's real quick. Watch how when his board is in the wake, it like lines up. You see his back foot, you can't even see because the nose of his board is pointing toward the boat. At this position, if we look at yours, um, you're in a very similar position and your board is still pointing across the wakes. That's why I want you to, to get this hand off the handle early because when you drop that hand, uh, it helps your shoulders square up, which then in turn gets your board in the right position and uh, gets you set up to pop correctly. I'm going to give you a couple other angles of it. So here's a here's a side view of that um, where the board is really kind of pointed toward the boat 
and squaring up nice with Trevor's and then you can finish really comfortably back on your feet. And then one more of Kyle from uh, a rear view. You'll see how well he really squares up here. And his board has still not left the wake and he's really, really tall and really squared up. And that allows him to flip really comfortably back around. So that's really the biggest thing. So maybe do some, uh, some backside re-entry ollies with one hand on the handle. So you'll, you'll stand right here in the trough of the wake with only your right hand on the handle and then you'll do some re-entry ollies where you'll ollie on the face of the wake and try and land um, down here. So you'll be ollieing kind of away from the wakes, almost on the balls of your feet, kind of on your toes, so that you can pop that direction and really square up your chest and shoulders and board to the boat and practice that a few times. Um, once you get that comfortable, then come back in and do another tantrum and try and just be one-handed in that re-entry popping position. That should fix that. Um, that's about it for your tantrum, and uh, let's move on to the 360. So your 360 is, uh, your heel side 360, you're having a lot of the same problems as you did on your toe side of spinning early. So you'll see here, as soon as you leave the wake, you start to really throw your shoulders into it, um, and you tilt over. So you kind of throw your upper body at the second wake, and then when you're trying to get the handle pass, you're just kind of falling over. So see how this angle is? It's very similar to your toe side where you kind of started spinning early by throwing your body into it. And then this axis just kind of gets kinked. And you can tell right here you're losing control of it. So you can kind of ignore anything past this because you're just trying to save the trick. Um, and then there's one more attempt after this guy. So you go a little early with your upper body. See how right here the board is like still kind of the tails in the wake and it hasn't really turned to 180 yet, but your upper body is already facing this way. Um, that means that you're using your upper body a lot to really spin into this. Um, and uh, what that will do is it messes your line tension up and then it kind of ki kicks your axis over in that weird way. So you want to pop up and wait and set your axis first just like on the toe side one. Um, yeah, and you're really trying to get the handle. You got kind of stuck off axis a little bit because you just threw your upper body around so much. Uh, and that's the biggest thing is we just want to really calm down that upper body. Um, so here's an example of Bob Sitchell doing a nose grab heel side front side 360. You can kind of ignore the nose grab because he does it so fluid it doesn't really affect his timing. Um, the only thing it does is it makes him take his hand off the handle a little bit earlier. But uh, you want to have this tempo a little bit more like, like Bob has. So you're going to go up. You'll notice that now he's in the position with his board that you were at when your board is still in the water pointed right across the wakes and then you kind of set your axis and get upright you'll notice he's still not at full 180 like he's still not on a quite a toe side edge and he's at the peak of his jump um, and then his lower body finishes it so he kind of throws his lower body into it and leaves his upper body behind um, you can see the way that we're looking um, we're looking like directly down his shoulders um, and then if you look at the board, the board is rotated, you know, a good 45 degrees or more beyond his upper body. So if his if his upper body was the same, sorry, it's really hard to explain three-dimensionally on a two-dimensional thing. Uh, if his upper body was in the same position his lower body was in the spin, um, then you would see his, the, his back, you'd see his shoulder blades facing you right now. Does that make sense? Um, so Right now his board is at like 270 and his upper body is at 180. And that helps him finish the rotation with his lower body and then his upper body can kind of catch up later. Um, and uh, that helps his rotation stay in control. So it's really a lower body initiation instead of an upper body initiation, which is what you're doing. You're trying to get your upper body to make the spin happen like, um, like hucking it on a snowboard or something. But... In reality, what you're doing is you're trying to get up 
and set your axis well and you use the handle to kind of help you leverage your lower body. So you get up and in, con in control and then use your lower body to initiate the spin and your upper body will follow. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, so here's the drills for you to fix that. It looked like you were a little uncomfortable in the cuffed position. So what I want you to do is I want you to watch this video getting into the cuffed riding position um, and just get a little bit comfortable uh, getting cuffed, getting switched, getting switch cuffed and riding around in that position. Then what I want you to do is I want you to go to this drill. It's, uh, it's called drill speeding up switch progress. And uh, you're going to slow the boat down here, as you can see, to like 16 miles an hour. You're going to get cuffed. And then you're going to ride around in the cuffed position for a little while. This drill is really awkward if you're not really comfortable, but that's kind of the point, is if you are not comfortable just riding around on the water in this position, then you know your comfort level in the air in the middle of a really hard trick is going to be even less comfortable than this. So we want to take all the impact and scary back edge catches out of it uh, by slowing down to 16 miles an hour and just practicing edging around in the cuffed position and switching back and forth from switch to regular and just get you comfortable with that position. Um, it's really, really going to benefit you in a lot of ways, especially toe side. I know that um, you uh, in your toe side 360 that you still require a bit of a handle pass there and, and it looks like you've you've done these before. I'm not saying that you haven't, but it it will really pay off in your 360 um, to be patient. Because what happens when people rush it is they have this feeling that is, I got to get past the 360 because I don't want to catch my back edge. Like no one wants to get stuck right here and then have their heel side edge get caught. So what ends up happening is the way that people think they can get past it is by rushing their upper body into the handle pass so that they can get the handle in the other hand and have the handle unwind them so they don't have any troubles with that. The problem is, is when they initiate the trick that way, it kills their line tension, stalls them out kind of like this, and then they do get stuck right here like, like you are, and you, uh, you saved it by moving your lower body kind of at the last minute. Um, but, uh, but that's... That's kind of why that's happening, and then those drills are the way to help counterbalance that. So, um, but yeah, that's about it. Everything here looks like you've got a lot of uh, good fundamentals in place. It's just a couple axis setting issues uh, and uh, going early. And again, uh, like I said, a lot of a lot of wakeboarders deal with the going early problem. Uh, even you, know, you talk to any pro rider and say, do you have an issue going early on a lot of tricks? And they'll say, you know, it's a constant battle. So um, you're not alone in this, uh, but uh, you're going to be able to correct these pretty quickly, I think, and uh, be on the water landing these things in no time. So hit us up if you have any other questions. If there's one of these that you're trying to troubleshoot still, you can record another video and upload that one individually, um, or you can uh, add some comments in the comment section below. And uh, we look forward to seeing you progress. Thanks again.